Today we want to define something called a vector valued function. Now consider just a simple graph y equal f of x. In calculus 2 we learned how to parameterize functions. So in this situation here if I said let x equal t y equal f of t what I want to do now is create a vector that would describe this exact same curve and we'll call this vector r of t and r of t will be the x and y in parameterized form. Now the idea is for different values of t I would get different vectors and each of these vectors would stop exactly at that point on the curve. In other words if a comma b is a point on the curve then the vector a comma b would have terminal point on the curve. So the idea is that a vector valued function the endpoints of the vector will describe the entire curve over its domain. Let's consider a couple of simple graphs in the xy plane. Let's start with the parabola y equal x squared where x is greater than or equal to zero so it's only the right hand side. If I do the parameterization like we did before x equals t and then y equals t squared then our position vector r of t would be t comma t squared for t greater than or equal to zero so I would want to highlight that so when t is zero I have the zero vector when t is one I'd have that vector when t is two and so on we would describe that entire curve for as long as we want to now let's consider a circle of radius a centered at the origin. If I make the change in this case, let x equal a cos t, y equal a sine t, then r of t would be a cos t, a sine t, and then I would probably just simply let t go from 0 to 2 pi. And the idea then, when t is 0, I am here. When t is pi over 2, here, pi, and so on. I would carve out every single point on that circle. Now, although leaving things in standard form makes sense in two dimensions, in three dimensions, it turns out this is how we're going to be able to describe curves in space. Now let's consider a curve in three dimensions. There is no way I can describe this curve the same way I did in 2. In 2 I can say y is a function of x, but here x, y, and z must be independent of each other, so what we do is we choose the parameter t and we say let x, y, and z all be functions of t. So for example, t equals 0 might put me at this point here, and then t equals 1 let's say puts me here, and then t equals 2, and so on. For every value of t I can carve this out if I make the following decision here. You see x, y, and z will all become functions of t, therefore our position vector at any time is simply x of t, y of t, z of t. And this is the form we're going to use from this point on because there's no other way to describe motion in three dimensions. Again, as I'm moving through space, every point on the curve is a terminal point of a vector looking like this. Let's consider kind of a classic vector valued function. R of t is cos t, sine t, t, and t will range from 0 to 4 pi. Now, we suspect that sine and cosine are going to be circular in nature, but t is constantly rising. So at t equals 0, I would be at 1, 0, 0. So I would be, let's say right here, one unit out. Now, as t increases to pi over 2, I'd be at 0, 1 but pi over 2 units high, which means I'm up here above the y-axis. Then as I get to pi, I'd be at negative 1, 0 pi units, so I'd be in the back here, but pi units high. And as I keep going, this is what ends up happening. I get this spiral. I get this slinky. In other words, I get what's called a helix. Now the simplest way to think of the helix is it's a spiral in this case which is increasing and I will have gone around at least two times completely. Now if I allow t to be a larger range it would be a, a much bigger helix. But this is the basic notion of a vector valued function. We can describe movement in space this way.